Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in crypto, break down a bite-sized piece. So today, just the thumbnail suggests this Cardano decentralized exchange is about to launch and it could potentially change everything. So we're going to take a look at uh, the Sunday swap. We're also going to take a look at some data that uh, could indicate when the Bitcoin top actually is. And it's just two lines and it's been correct over the last 10 years. Also, we'll take a look at uh, an ad I'm talking about as far as I need a researcher. And finally, we'll take a look at uh, real quickly the metaverse and the different uh, land that I'm getting into as far as virtual. So we'll go over all those things, but first take a look at what's going on the market today. It's Sunday, beautiful day, and the market is doing pretty good. Still healthy, just bouncing around at around the 2.8 trillion market cap somewhere on there. I'm always wondering, when are we gonna hit 3 trillion? And uh, if you're just getting into crypto, congratulations, you came at like the right time. But uh, I remember when we passed over 1 trillion, everybody was ecstatic about it. Like, wow, 1 trillion. We went past the, tw the 2017 all-time high market cap, which was like 840 billion or 860 billion, somewhere around there. When then we hit 2 trillion and everybody would just lost their minds. And now we're at 2.8, almost 2.85 trillion, somewhere around there, depending on where you look at. And people are like, eh. Three trillion, not a big deal. I think it's uh, it's a big deal. I think it can set up a lot of uh, good, a uh, little FOMO, maybe a little bit of people getting into it. So also, if we take a look at uh, coin action, Bitcoin sitting around 60, eh, 622, it's pretty good. Uh, Ethereum up uh, good, 4,600. When's it going to break the 5,000 mark? Probably soon, the way things are going. Solana hitting into that fourth spot. Amazing. And uh, we're looking at a price action of $250. So congratulating Solana holders. I've been holding for a little bit of time. I remember buying, I didn't buy Solana when it was, you know, pennies, but I got it in the uh, the, the double digits of like uh, $20, somewhere around there. So eh, not too bad. And uh, Cardano, Tethers, nobody cares. Cardano slipping down, but $2 and uh, so on and so forth. Let's see what else is going on. Avalanche is making big moves. Another layer one solution. We take it like that. 8% for crypto.com and uh, FTX 7.52. Another exchange token doing quite well as long along with the Binance coin. So that's what we got for the market. Let's just jump into today's top story because I think this one's going to take a little bit of uh, of explaining. I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. And I'm actually going to skip a lot of things because it's really up for you if you want to read this stuff. But this is what it, what it comes down to. Sunday swap. So Sunday swap is the next iteration of a decentralized exchange on Cardano. Now, hopefully they can do it because MimSwap, MinSwap, whatever it was called, they had a concurrency issue uh, for user output, UTXO, or the unspent transactions as far as crypto goes. And what SundaySwap is trying to do is solve that issue when that came about and say, you know what? We looked at a lot of things and here's what we're doing. So this is what we're talking about. And again, I'm going to link this in the description. You can read the whole thing. It's super long. It's super long. And the things that I highlight, I'm going to skip over a bunch of them because it's not something that we need to know. The meat and potatoes is right here. Here's the overview. They did a non-exhaustive uh, list of the names we have internally uh, to the top solutions are. And this is the things that they took a look at of what they thought about doing. Uniswap clone, open batching, tokenized escrows, mixed escrows, programmable order book. If you want to find all about those, they're all in the very bottom. Ultimately, we decided on a solution called governed, governed scoopers, which is a it's a hybrid of an order book and an automatic automated market maker automatic market maker. And here's the different things uh, that they took a look at down here, the rejected solutions. Again, it's a lot. And they explain exactly why they didn't use these solutions because of the different errors and problems they're going to come run into if they use them now, kind of like what MimSwap did in the very beginning. So they said, we're not going to, we're going to tell you what these are and what people are using. And then we're going to talk about why we didn't use them, which they, you know, goes off in detail. And this is really what it comes down to right here. Resolving, and it's up at the top, resolving this issue and the other issue we discuss leads to the solution that we'll be launching. It's a hybrid automated market making order book. So here's what it's called, a scooper model, AMM, order book. Like a pure order book in the realm of crypto and, and, and DeFi, market participants can place good until canceled orders onto the blockchain. These don't require interacting with any pre-existing entities. They don't suffer from the UTXO contention problems and other protocol designs, MinSwap, MinSwap, whatever you call it. Unlike a pure order book though, the liquidity pool can rely on the orderly and efficient execution of swaps 
enabled by the automated market maker. And now also, they're going to rely on a third-party aggregator. We've been calling these actors scoopers. What's a scooper? It builds and submits a transaction, which executes many swaps against the AMA, and in turn, collects a small ADA fee. So you can have everything going on at the same time and nothing's getting mixed or missed and nothing is in, in line too long and there's too much in queue and there's a big slowdown. They're trying to solve that whole issue and it looks like they may have done it. Well, we'll see. Above all, we want to emphasize that the safety and security, this is the big thing. I, this is the big thing of your funds is always protected by the global consensus ledger rules and smart contracts deployed on the blockchain. The scoopers can never take the funds in your order, withdraw liquidity, or execute an order other than the ones that you specified. So again, you can't do a rug pull type of situation here. So how do we ensure that our scoopers are honest? Because, well, first of all, if you're going to be a scooper in this situation, they're going to incentivize you. If you screw up, if you do a thing that's our, that are dishonest, they're going to keep those rewards, ADA, and they're going to boot you uh, out of the program and on top of the fact that you couldn't even touch uh, the actual crypto that's being swapped in this DEX. So the first step is choosing trusted members of the community run them. Cardano's blessed and they got a lot of good people. Thus, just as we select stake pools to partner with us for our ISO, ISO or ISPO, initial stake pool offering, initial stake offering, this is where you stake your crypto, in this case ADA, and instead of paying you an ADA at 4 to 6 8 6% APY, they're going to uh, give you the rewards of this token, in this case, Sunday Swap. Uh, we will also be selecting stake pools to run these scoopers. I know your question right now is, when's the ICO? Hold on, I'll get to that. At launch, the Sunday Swap will assign a 30-day scooper license to the stake pool operators, uh, which can be used to construct and aggregate swaps from the Sunday Swap community. Each time I do this, the aid of transaction fees are locked in a script. After the period, and this is just what I was talking about, after the period, they can either boot you or they can keep you around. If, however, governance decides via a vote that one of these scoopers is a bad actor, they're gone. And I, I like that part. And to finish up, as a point of reference, we chose the Uniswap v3 protocol to compare against querying EtherScan for transactions with Uniswap v3. They used these from three different days. Those average 26,000 transactions per day are roughly 18 per minute. And they said, this is what happened. So during their testing, both tests executed market operations as fast as possible and stopped after reaching 1,000 operations. We were able to execute all 1,000 swaps in eight minutes for an average of 120 swaps per minute. This is 107% of the 70 transactions per minute for Uniswap. Now, yes, you're going to say to yourself, but I want 10,000 transactions per second. And I want 100,000 transactions per second. What they're telling you right here is they're like, look, even though you may want those things, if you take a look at Uniswap, even though it is V3, this is the time of transaction volume that we have right now. Later on, we'll take a look at potentially even, even higher output because right now they're just testing. IOG increased the memory limits, memory limits from 10 to 30 million units on Alonzo. We ran the same load test here under these pessimistic conditions. All 1,000 operations of 43 per minute or 60% of the Uniswap estimate. Comparing the computer, the current block size, it's possible the block could increase up to a factor of 32 times, meaning that we could reach 1,300 to 3,800 transactions per minute, which is pretty good on a layer one as they transition over to a layer two solution. Finally, the beautiful thing about this protocol is that end users faced zero contention other than times of extreme network congestion. It should be extremely rare for the queuing of an order to fail. And this was the problem with NIMSWAP. When they did the whole thing, there was a problem with everything being in queue and there was one order and everybody had to wait for that order to get executed. And everybody in the back of the line just had to wait, just like you're the DMV. Apparently that's not gonna happen. So this is what it is. And this comes out of the crux of it. Why should you care? Why should you care? Well, obviously a DEX would be a big thing, a working project. And that is going to be great for Cardano holders like myself. And this is what's going to happen. So they're going to start the selection process for the stake pool operators by publishing a Google form, blah, blah, blah. This is what they did. They said, look, if you're a stake pool operator, fill out this form and you're going to be a part of the ISO. On top of the ISO, the initial stake offering, because they're not going to run the pools. The stake pool, the stake pool operators like D News is going to run those pools for them. People are going to delegate there and they're going to give out the Sunday swap. And on top of that, they're also going to be scoopers later on. So the public test net will begin soon. The, then, then we'll have an audit and then we'll launch our mainnet protocol. And along with it, 
uh, the ISO. And the ISO is coming up within a month or so. Correct me in the comment section, but that's what I've read so far. So this is what's going on. Things are moving in the right direction. And this is why I bring it up. First of all, trust is a commodity you can't buy. That's really what it comes down to. There is a reason. You see this thing that spins above my head all the time? Is Dan teaches crypto.com. I made that free for a reason because not everybody can afford a dollar or ten dollars or twenty bucks a month for this. I made it free so everybody could learn about crypto, but it also helps out with trust. So if you are in my D new stake pool, or if you find that you know what, I like this channel, I like Rob, seems to be a pretty trustworthy guy, guy. This is where I'm calling in my trust markers, they are selecting these different stake pool operators. And I want to be one of them. We, me and my team want to be one of them. So here's what I'm asking for you to do. Go over to Sunday Swap, at Sunday Swap. I want you to, to if you have a Twitter account, just tweet out DNews for stake pool operator for Sunday Swap. That's it. Or just message him or just uh, follow me on News Asset and uh, talk about it that way. Also, I want you to go over to danteachescrypto.com. Again, it's free. And uh, if you see over here where it says staking, on the very top right-hand corner is login, there's staking. Click on A to staking. And this is what it looks like if you're on a desktop. Let's see, this is what it'll look like. Uh, there it goes. If you're on mobile, you just click on menu, staking, click on that, A to staking. It's gonna take you to this web page. It's gonna talk about exactly how you do all the whole staking process. So again, I bring this up because I'd like you to reach out to Sunday Swap and say, you know what? We'd like DNews to be a part of that process. So that's what we have for today. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. This will go pretty quickly. The Bitcoin top. So this was uh, this was pretty good. Two simple lines that work for 10 years. This is from uh, Tech Dev. He's been uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, critical acclaim lately because he does a lot of comparison between 2011, 13, 17, and 21, all the different bull runs that we've had. I know some people will say, why are you comparing these different bull runs? This is totally different. Yes, yes it is. But there's always some information to be gleaned from the past. You don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. So this one was pretty good. And he says, look, there's two lines that work, have worked for the last 10 years. And he's talking about the RSI. And when I took a look at this, I'm like, it's interesting and it's just it's not to say that this is exactly where it's going but it kind of gives us a clue as to where things could potentially be so if we take a look at this he says look when i'm looking at the, at the tops if you look at the bottom here see where it says rsi 14 period see where the tops are circled in 2011 it corresponds to the rsi and the rsi usually you want to say like the relative strength index which just kind of determines if it's overbought or it's oversold, higher it goes is overbought, lower it goes is oversold. Once it gets to a point of around 90, 95, for Bitcoin I'm talking about here, this is what tech dev is talking about, you're looking at it's usually peaked out over the 14-day logarithmic chart. Same thing happened uh, right here, looks in 2013, again in 2013, 2017, and then also we just had another one uh, not too long ago in April 2021. And what he's saying here is he's like, look, in this very top right hand corner this is where we are we're at and this is where i think we are going which is right up here where is that where could that be well it's not 300,000 150 200 somewhere around there but it just shows you that there's a lot of room to grow as far as the crypto well as first as far as bitcoin is concerned and then this also leads me to my next point because i remember listening to plan b and he talked about the same thing he goes look in normal markets the rsi less than 30 or which is oversold and the rsi more than 70 overbought uh, is usually a pretty good marker but he says look for bitcoin it, that doesn't really work out and he says uh RSI can go as high as 95 because Bitcoin has a continuous upward trend. And then he says he's kind of saying the same type of thing of what tech dev is saying. Then also, if we take a look at the Pi cycle top indicator, people have corrected me on this. They said, Rob, this hasn't been, been right four times. They looked back in time and they predicted that the, uh, the tops correspond to when this 111 day moving average flips over with the 350 day moving average times two and it happened in 2013. It also happened again in 2013, just like what we talked about with uh, TechDev 
Let me blow this out. 2013s again. And then we saw the same thing happen in 2017. It flipped over the 111 day, 350 day moving average. And then it came pretty close right here in uh, 2019, but it didn't happen. And then over here, it just happened again. And this was not, in retrospect, this predicted it. And when this happened, around April 21st at 47,000, it flipped over. That's when I should have been uh, selling a little bit of Bitcoin, but I did not. I forgot to check this chart. And now we can see that we took quite a dip and we're going back up. But again, we've got quite a lot of room to run for these to hit. So look, I still think we got a pretty good bull run. Who knows what's going to go to uh, end, end of December or January, February, March. I just know that I dollar cost average in, probably dollar cost average out. But this time, I'll probably be taking a little bit more loans on my crypto. That's it for that section. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And let's move on. And this is our last couple pieces. I need a researcher. And uh, I got so many things going on. I just need someone to do some pretty solid research, um, mostly for the different projects that are coming in and they want me to talk about them and also even some daily research. So if you live in Puerto Rico, that's the big thing. If you live in Puerto Rico, reach out to me because I'd like to, uh, to get to hire one person for research. I'll be putting out more of the criteria and how you can really uh, whittle it down to what's, what's gonna happen, but I need to have this done. Uh, relatively within the next month, definitely by the end of the year. So that's the, the, the second to last thing. And then lastly, I'll talk about uh, the metaverse. Uh, I'm kind of hoarse today because I did another video which I talked about my metaverse buys and the lands that I, I have uh, purchased be on between Sandbox and Decentraland. And I can tell you right now, I know people say that usually in real estate, we hear location, location, location is like the biggest thing, but I found out in this one, it's not that big of a deal uh, as opposed to in the metaverse. So I'll talk about the lands that I, I purchased, how to purchase them, how to, you know, things to look for, things to avoid, and I'll release that video soon. But that's it for today. So look, if you if you stuck with me to the end, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. A lot of things going on. If you like the video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. A lot of things are happening fast and furious. So this is the time to really lock in the information. But that's it. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.